I died in 1987. Why did I just wake up? Bear with me. I'm still learning to use the gizmos of the 21st century. It's been a hectic month. Well, that's an understatement. I returned from the dead. Yes, you heard me correctly. And that isn't even the worst part. I've scarcely scratched the surface of the past month's horrors. A new friend, most of my old ones are retired or dead, told me about the internet. <laughs> it blows my mind. I remember a few people talking about it back in the day, but it was for geeks and freaks. It's cool now. I'll suspend my cynicism. I've been reading about the occult practice of fail-breaking, whereby a deceased individual's soul returns to its earthly body from the world beyond the veil. That's what happened to me. I'm sure of it. But who would bring me back after nearly four decades? I have an inkling. All I know with any sort of certainty is that my return continues to harsh the universal balance. There are forces that seek to eternally torture me, so I must return my soul to the realm beyond the veil before that happens. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. You're probably confused. I'll talk about February the 5th, 2023. The day on which I return to the land of the living, 36 years after dying. The process of resurrection is a hell beyond explanation. And I thought death hurt. It's worth pointing out that I was flattened by a hit-and-run driver named Billy Riley, a high school rival of mine. It was a horrible way to go. And I remember, as I lay in a pool of blood, the taste of my own... Well, never mind all of that. Point is that resurrection is a terror beyond terror. I feel like a reanimated creep, a zombified husk. I was always a stone slacker, but I don't feel right. It's the kind of existential dread I used to feel when I was tripping, but I'm stone cold sober, and this isn't transcendent or eye-opening. I'm acutely aware of the fact that I do not belong on Earth. When I woke last month, I was lying on a pavement near the spot where I died in 1987. The houses had changed, but my surroundings were identifiable. You don't forget your own death, after all. I was wearing the same denim jeans and leather jacket, though they were a little dusty and tattered. Bloodstained too, I realised. But my body lacked a single blemish. After a few unsettling conversations with perplexed strangers, I realised I'd woken up in the distant future. My first wish was that some egghead would invent a time machine, so I could go back to a decade I understand. I don't even want that. My time on Earth is over. I need to send my soul back to the world beyond the veil. It's not as simple as dying according to the laws of veil-breaking. If I perish in the wrong way, my soul will be lost forever. I need to find the one who did this to me. And I suspect it might have been the hollow man, my petrifying pursuer. He approached me in a scantily lit back alley towards the end of my night shift. I work at McDonald's, thanks to John the guy who taught me about the internet. I was emotional to see a brand I recognised. Those gorgeous golden arches. You have no idea what it's like to wake in a foreign world. To not understand anything or anyone. As I tossed out bin bags, I was vaguely aware of a dark figure sitting on his haunches. He watched me from the shadows of the Ginnell's dead end corner. I ignored the seemingly homeless man, but he finally stirred when I prepared to walk back inside. 
the shadowy observer rose to his feet, revealing himself to be well over eight feet tall. When he unsteadily tiptoed into the light, I shrieked. The man had a crooked posture, leaning in a lopsided manner, and I knew his face, a demented, fragmented version of the person I once knew. The man had a contorted version of Billy Riley's face. His jaw hung abnormally slackly, and his eyes were colourless spheres. As he left his hovel, drowning my screams with the sound of his hissing mouth, I noticed something even more horrible. The hollow man had curled atop a pile of flesh and bones at the end of the alley. One of his victims, a gutted woman, was still alive. Help, she croaked. I didn't know what to do but gawp in horror. I continued to back away from the haunting spectacle unfolding before me, but Billy kept approaching. Hello, Ron, the man groaned in a garbled voice. I've been looking for you. Billy, I cried. The man smiled, blood dripping from his crusty lips. Thirty years of suffering, and you're finally home, Ron. When they see you, alive and well, my name will be cleared. I fumbled with the fire exit's door handle, but it jammed. Ah, oh, Nadia, I moaned. Still, I wonder, am I strong enough, Ron? <sighs> am I strong enough to resist my hunger? Billy whispered, placing a hand on my shoulder. I screeched and turned to face the monstrosity, whose shriveled but mighty fingers dug into my flesh. His enormous mouth grew large enough to swallow my skull, and I saw the inside of Billy's empty body, a crater begging to be filled. The Hollow Man. <sighs> this was a fruitless endeavour. I've already lost too much to be redeemed, the man hissed. There is no use in keeping you alive. Impulsively, I dropped to my knees and rolled to the side, before Billy could engulf me. <sighs> the man snarled, snatching the air in an attempt to seize my McDonald's jacket, but I slipped away and fled into the night. Since that evening, I've been living on John's sofa, praying that the alley abomination doesn't find me. I'm currently researching the world beyond the veil, desperate for a solution. I know Billy is the key to saving me, but he isn't Billy anymore. I've cracked it. Well, John helped me. I'm not exactly a prolific reader, and the veil-breaking book was melting my brain. We found it in an occult store. The man couldn't, or wouldn't, tell us much about it. My new compadre made more sense of it than me. He seems to have loved this occult nonsense. I've mainly talked about how I came back to life, rather than why. We all know that Billy Riley wanted to clear his name by proving that he never killed me. I assume he hadn't counted on becoming a soulless, flesh-eating monster in the process. However, there was more to it than that. John wanted to delve deeper into Billy's motives, so we did some online research on our town's history. Turns out Billy spent a chunk of time in prison for vehicular manslaughter, but he swerved a premeditated murder charge. The slippery sicko. He was released after serving a 20-year sentence. What did you say you did to the grub? Hair fried it. John laughed. <laughs> I used an air fryer, Ron. Welcome to 2023. 
I'm sorry we don't have the horror boards from Back to the Future too. Wait, they made a second Back to the Future? Oh, I love the first film. I mean, I miss so much. Billy robbed me of a full life. Yeah, and I know why you're joking around, John said. You're trying to run from this. It's not going to work. It's, it's not going to go away. I nodded. Nerves make me talk a lot, John. I, this is just too... It's too much for me, you know. Look at this, John said, pointing at his computer monitor. It's a post on the town's private Facebook page. Don't ask why I'm sad enough to follow that, but just, just read it. Is Facebook the webbed page with five-second music videos? I asked. Uh, what? Ron, just, just stop trying to understand the internet, John said. Basically, new evidence came to light in 2020. Turns out you weren't the only one Billy Riley hurt. He's been missing since the call for his arrest. Maybe he... I don't, I don't, I don't know, Ronnie. I, I suppose he must have resurrected me to remain a free man. I finished. John nodded. I read the veil-breaking book from front to back. It took me all weekend, but uh, here's what I've deduced. Billy Riley made a deal with an unearthly entity called Deet. An entity which brought you back from the dead. However, that wasn't the end of it. Billy had to fulfil his side of the bargain. Deet requires people's souls. I shuddered. <sighs> What's the plan? John paused before frowning. You described Billy as physically hollow. I, I read something about those who served Deet for too long. Lifeless husks who can only consume flesh, not souls. Ron, I, it, it's too late. Billy's too far gone to be saved, and he might be too far gone to save you. My friend paused, and I trembled at the prospect of my doomed soul. There is one way. What, one way we could possibly save you, but it's a long shot, Ron. I, we need to sever Billy's connection to Deet, John said. Then we pray that the unholy thing returns your soul to the realm beyond the veil. We, we beg it for mercy. Oh, you're a good man, John. I thank you for helping me, I said. Thank me when this is over, my friend replied. John drove us to the local park armed with nothing but the veil-breaking book and good intentions. The store-bought pig's liver festered on the back seat. The book said that should weaken him, John explained, scooping the vile organ out of the car. Only in a dulled state will Billy's powers be returned to Deet. We waited at a picnic table and watched the park slowly empty. A stillness in the air weighed heavily on my shoulders, as the sun set, silence consumed us. Billy was watching. I felt terrible eyes drilling into my skull. I prayed the trap would work. He's here, I gasped. A horrifying creak confirmed my instinct as two abnormal hands appeared from the darkness, clutching the bench on which I sat. Beneath the wooden picnic table, beady eyes inexplicably glistened garishly. John and I jumped up, shrieking in animalistic terror. The woodwork of the table splintered and broke, revealing the deformed shadow that used to be Billy Riley. He was taller than before. He or it turned to John, who was clutching the pig's liver in pale hands. The demon lunged, and I screeched as my friend sacrificed his arms to Billy's predatory teeth. <laughs> 
John produced an inhuman sound of agony, and Billy quickly recoiled, realising that he had ingested something sinister. Free of the entity's carnivorous canines, John collapsed onto the picnic table, resting on the stumps that used to sport hands. He's, he's weak, he's weak, Ron, John woozily croaked. Lips twitching in horror, I called. Deet, I bring you the veil breaker. Please save my soul. Before our eyes, we watched Billy convulse, mouth sagging as the blackness within his eyes seemed to escape. His body shrank and crumpled, reducing him to a fetal ball in the grass. Writhing on the floor was no more than a man. The blackness hadn't left his heart, of course, but Billy Riley was human once more. Just a devious, dastardly delinquent. Billy shivered on the grass. What have you done? It's over, John said, fading from blood loss. C come the second hour, Deets will save Ron's soul. Billy lay on the grass, snivelling ceaselessly, but he posed no threat. He was too diminished in his human form. He simply quivered and sobbed in the darkness curling into a tight cocoon. We left him there and wandered over to what remained of the picnic table, sitting down and emotionally embracing one another. It was all over. And that brings us to the current moment. I'm recording this final message and preparing to return to the place I left, a place far beyond this mortal world. I'm not afraid of dying. It is how things should be. I was never supposed to come back. It's been a tubular ride. John's going to take Billy to the police station when I'm gone. I told him to call an ambulance first. I wish he'd been around back in my day. He totally would have loved the 80s. I won't miss 2023, but I'll admit that it wasn't all bad. Air fries are pretty rad. Most of the people aren't too bad either. Heed my warning. Do not break the veil.